a band responsible for one of my favorite rock albums of all time just came to town. So I had to go and see if the magic that drew me to this band was still there. Would Billy Duffy be as cool as I imagined? Would Ian Asprey be as arrogant as people tell me he can be live? Could he still sing at the age of 62 or would I have to step in and help? One of the very few benefits of having a sister that was four years older than me when I was a kid was that I got into some of the music that she was listening to and The Cult was one of those bands. My sister was deeply in love with Ian Asprey and told me that he was everything that a man should be. Back in those days I preferred blondes and I fell in love with Billy Duffy. I mean, first of all, what a fucking cool name that is, Billy Duffy. And then he played rock and roll on a guitar different than anybody else. He played that hollow body Gretz guitar and I just thought it was the coolest thing in the world. And a few years later after my sister got me into this band, they came with Sonic Temple in 1989. And that album for me is one of the best rock and roll albums ever made. It didn't see the light of day because it stayed in my CT for at least a year. And just a little quiz on that guys, how is that album connected to Metallica's Black album? But after Sonic Temple, things started heading south for the band. I mean, the next album that they released, they released on the same day as Nevermind by Nirvana. And we all know what happened to rock and roll back then. Plus, they had some internal issues, so the band kind of broke up. There were some on and off reunions, and they kind of reunited in 2006. And they have done four albums since then. Last of them in 2022 that I actually reviewed. You can check that review up here. So I was both excited and anxious when I stepped into that 1200 people theater here in Prague. I'd never been to that venue. The opening act was some artifarty. It was totally not rock and roll at all. And the guy on my channel here, a subscriber, told me that he had seen them in Serbia last year, the cult that is, and that the volume was too low. It didn't really feel like a rock concert. So I was like, okay, with this opening, this cannot be good. <laughs> Well, it was for sure loud, so there was one worry gone, but it was hard to hear from the first two songs on the concert if Ian Asprey could actually sing, because those two songs were songs that I didn't really know very well. I mean, they were good, the sound was great and all that, but it was in song number three, Wildflower, where he was put to the test. <laughs> As you might hear, then the song has actually been slowed down quite a lot. And Ian Asprey was not able to sing the song in the same way as he did 30, 40 years ago. But it wouldn't have been fair to expect that. So he still has a pretty good voice for a 62-year-old. And it was only later on that I had to help. But there were times during the concert where I felt that the vocals were too high in the mix somehow or too loud in the mix. Maybe that's just me because I really wanted to hear Billy Duffy. But there was no sign of the crowd engagement yet from Ian Asprey, but that would to change. Billy Duffy seems to have forgotten his Gretsch guitar at home, but his playing and sound was still amazing. And he really showed to me that night that he puts this band in a different category. That he is the special thing about this band that made it different from any other rock band back in the days. Now the other two guys in the band, Charlie Jones on the bass and John Tempesta on the drums, were rock rock solid. They created a really good foundation and a backbone that allows, you know, Billy Duffy to kind of be all over the place like he is on his guitars. The sound quality was amazing. This venue seems to have a really good sound quality, plus I'm sure that the mixer guys and the band did a great job. Kind of midway through the set, the atmosphere started getting really, really hot. You know, people really started jumping, clapping, singing along and all that. Part of it was due to Ian Asprey's a little bit weird um, crowd engagement tactics. So he called the country Czechoslovakia, which it hasn't been called for decades. He didn't know the name of the city. He said Praha, Praha, whatever you call it. It was things like this who were getting people to sing Come on, Feel the Noise by Slade, uh, Ole, 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 things like this weird stuff that usually I think people would boo, but he kind of gets away with it. Some, there's some bad boy in him that actually brings out, I don't know, the bad boys in the crowd. I mean, he even dropped his microphone on the floor and, and, and demanded it to be exchanged. I mean, it was like kind of like a spoiled brat on stage, but it actually worked. Now, the set list was 17 songs out of eight different albums, including an acoustic version of E.T. Chow Baby.
it was during ET that I realized I gotta step up and support my boy Ian Astbury. So when they played Fire Woman, I took matters into my own hands. Well, I guess not all superheroes wear capes. The lights in the show were kind of cool, it was raw, it was really basic, but really fitted well with the delivery somehow, and the crowd was great. Now the pros of this, there was amazing sound there, just top-notch sound. Most of the hits were there, at least the hits that I wanted to hear. I didn't feel that there was a lot of stuff that I could say was missing. They drove it through really well. They never allowed the energy in the, in the venue or anything to drop. It was also fun when they were playing the non-hits, if we can say like that. Ian Asprey's bad boy attitude actually worked. I liked it. It was arrogant, but it was cool. And the band was spot on. Now the negatives, I would say the, the vocals were a little bit too dominating in the mix and it's kind of weird to say that, I mean, when you have a singer like Ian Asprey, you kind of, you want to have him out there. But on some of the songs, I feel that it actually would have been better if he would have had a little bit lower volume. They could have set the program up a little bit differently because I think that if they would have played some of their more known songs up front a little bit, I think they would have gotten the crowd on even earlier than they did. Now the opening act was a mismatch. I mean, it was interesting stuff and definitely something but not a match for this band and didn't really do anything for the crowd so i'm actually going to give this concert nine out of ten i'll be very happy if you would like this video and subscribe to my channel for more concert reviews album reviews and interviews tell me if you've seen the cult live and how it was and then i want to turn your attention to this video here i had promised myself never to see this band live again and i broke that promise let's see what happens there and then i have this acdc concert review from earlier this summer in dresden check that out